Today, I want to talk about the investigatory powers bill yet again, but this time, internet connection records. And this crazy idea that there is such a thing as an internet connection record. And there isn't. The idea comes from telephone and call records. And it used to be that telephone calls were expensive things and the phone company had to account for them for their own billing purposes. And of course, phones were shared in a house. You'd have one phone and so you know, the bill payer would want to see who just spent an hour calling Australia. So these things mattered. And so we kind of accepted itemised phone bills as being a sensible thing for the bill payer to get to, to apportion the cost and to check it was right. Well, except they're horribly intrusive. We already have this notion that itemised phone bills shouldn't include things like calls to childline and other free phone numbers, uh, and ideally shouldn't in involve uh, calls to the Samaritans and things like this, because that's an invasion of privacy. So there's a little bit of understanding there, but mostly itemised phone bills are there, and because of various legislation over the time, including RIPA, the authorities could get these things. And, and when I say the authorities, I don't just mean the police. I mean the local council or the milk marketing board or pretty much anybody in any sort of government role could request, without a warrant, uh, itemised phone bills from phone companies for, for almost any purpose. I mean, okay, kind of pursuing some sort of investigation to some crime, maybe, but... Um, and that was seen as a useful thing for the police. So politicians think, well, here we are, the internet has now replaced the telephone. And, and it sort of has. But, um, even I don't make many phone calls anymore. I, I do an awful lot of texting. I do some FaceTime stuff, video stuff, um, an awful lot of email, uh, lots of social media stuff. But phone calls, not so much. So the internet sort of replaced phone calls. So they think, let's have the equivalent of... Uh, these phone call records for the internet. Let's have internet connection records. The problem is, unlike a phone call, there isn't just a thing. There isn't person A calls person B four or five minutes. There's a record of that. Um, no, the internet involves packets of data flowing around. And even if you try and collate it to a connection, you know, you go on Facebook. Well, when do you go on Facebook? Well, my phone's on Facebook 24 hours a day. It's connected permanently. There's one record for phone connected to Facebook and that's probably been there since I walked in the house you know, two days ago and haven't moved since. That's the single internet connection record for the encrypted connection to Facebook, so it's not very useful. If you went to Facebook and said, what can you tell us at a higher level? They might say, well, he looked at this post, he looked at that post, he liked that, he did a ha-ha on that, or an angry at that because it mentioned Theresa May. Um, they could get all this data, but this is all terribly intrusive stuff. Unlike a phone call where I might make or receive the odd phone call, two or three a day maybe, uh, none today I don't think. Uh, internet connection records, well, there could be literally millions per day, per person, because you're logging everything you do and everything your computer does and everything your phone does. And it's incredibly intrusive into your personal life. Uh, it's like logging every book you read. Um, and of course with mobile phones they're logging your location data, so you've, they've got detailed data about everywhere you go, everything you read, everything you say, uh, maybe not what you actually say, because that's a different warrant-based intercept, but the fact you say something and who it's to, um, it's, it's, it's Big Brother, or as we probably want to call it these days, Big Sister, or Nanny State. And that's not on. We have a basic human right to respect for privacy. Um, it's not just in Europe, it's in the United Nations as well. And I don't feel I've got privacy. Once this bill gets into law, everything I do on my phone, at home, away from home, everything I do on my computer, will be logged somewhere by a private company that I have to trust to protect that data. And it's everything. It's every website I go to. And I, I don't exactly have much to hide. But do I have something to fear? Well, of course I do. This is not just a database of everything I do. It's a database of everything everyone does. And it's searchable. Let's, let's you know, embarrass some people by searching who goes to a porn site. Um, you know, there's any number of reasons. 
And then, of course, there's the danger that this data leaks. Now, we've seen ISPs leak data. We have an ISP. We try very hard not to leak data. I think we've succeeded so far, but who knows? Um, there are some big ISPs that have leaked data. And this is going to happen because this is useful data. You can really blackmail people. You can certainly do what's called phishing attacks, where you pretend to be their bank or pretend to be some organisation because, hey, you know all the organisations they deal with. You know, you know which pension company they deal with because you know which pension company's website you went to. They know which bank you deal with. They know uh, which insurance company you deal with. So they can come to you uh, with a good idea on your, you know, your name and your address and everything else and pretend to be the insurance company you deal with, saying, you contacted us last Thursday about something. Can I just talk this through with you? And because they've got the data. It's a huge amount of personal data, and there's so much crime that can be committed with this. And somehow we're meant to feel safe with this. Well, let's put it right up there. Terrorists can run a Tor browser. That's just one way a terrorist, free of charge, download from the internet a Tor browser, run it on your computer, and the government will not see what you're doing. They won't see what you're doing, even if they've got a warrant to intercept your line, your communications. If you're running a Tor browser, they won't see it. Now, Tor isn't a very scalable or fast system. It's not a good way for everybody to access the internet. But it's a really good way for everybody who has something to hide to access the internet, and anyone who's worried about privacy, and any criminal, and any terrorist, and that's legal. That's, that's not been made illegal. You can use a Tor browser and your tracks are well hidden then. I can't say perfectly. The website you're visiting will possibly get some clues, but well hidden. Far more than everyone else. So this is spying on the people. It is massive. It's, it's so much more than, than was dreamt of in the, in the novel of 1984. This is so much more than Big Brother. Uh, this is so much more than any state. This is spy on everybody in the country, even though they are not a suspect, they're not suspected of any crime. They get spied on. They get their day-to-day -day things they're doing logged and monitored and recorded and searchable and kept. And that's just wrong. It is police state gone mad. We shouldn't be doing it. This country should not be doing this. No country should do this. It needs stopping, and it's in the law it's in the bill that's coming into law. It's this government doing it. We need to get it changed. We need to change the government and then get this part of this law repealed as soon as possible. I hope you're with me because if you're not, you're just, you know, one of the people being spied on.